Dobrý den, děkuji za přivítání a vám všem děkuji, že jste tady. It is a bit difficult for us to find a way around. Uh, well, we already apologized, you know, for this because simply the venue has changed in the nick of time. Let's uh, not talk about that anymore. Now, I focus on vaporization. I've been focusing on it for about 10 years. For eight years now, uh, I've had uh, the opportunity to always sort of sum up the results and to present it. Those of you reading Vaporize a Bottle, which is uh, the name of the topic and uh, has been published for the fourth year. Now, I guess it's a series where we compare vaporizers uh, in the market since it's been you know, very extensive now, the portfolio of vaporizers, and each and every one has a pro or con, different settings, and it does, uh, it is ever more obvious how important this is, because uh, cannabis also um, uh, comprises other substances than cannabinoids, not only cannabinoids, that is. So that is why I've been involved in this uh, ever more. And apart from those 60-plus cannabinoids that are known, there are 120, 140 terpenes, some of which evaporating at similar temperatures as cannabinoid, which is why it is quite interesting to um, see, to try, test, experiment, to try it uh, as an effective, uh, so to say, substance for different problems or conditions. Sometimes it boosts the effect and brings it to the receptor in a positive, so to say, way. Some, on the contrary, may mitigate psychotic phenomena or psychotic symptoms. Who or signs? Who? Are there any of you who haven't heard my lecture yet? Is there anybody who hasn't heard my lecture? Well, most of you, obviously. For those of you who are regulars, so to say, regulars who have been here before many times and heard my pre uh, presentations, I wish to say that uh, some of the slides are repeated, some are new. Well, if some if somebody wants some sort of one-on-one -on -one consultation or meeting, yes, it can be done, but uh, Vaporizer Lounge is far too far from here, and people with uh, limited uh, mobility would uh, have a problem to get there. It is in the whole seven or what. So consultation or meeting with me is uh, organized immediately after this presentation in the reading room here. It is um, on the right-hand side of this hall. It's kind of calm and relaxed, peaceful place next to legalization, a legalization stand. So try to find me if you wish. I'll have the same pinkish uh, sweatshirt so that uh, you'll recognize me. Now, let's have a look at my story. Like most people, I got to vaporization from uh, smoking. So these were the problems I suffered or disorders I suffered uh, from. Most of you have experienced that. There is plenty. It all started in 1993 by insomnia or sleeping disorders. I've always been given some 
stuff from my friends and later on I grew something, whatever was available. And it continued from uh, the ointments, cookies or meals to vaporizers, smoking to vaporizers, which helped me get rid of the nic nicotine addiction. So I gave up smoking. I couldn't, you know, uh, I wasn't able to consume it in any other form but together with tobacco. So vaporizer actually saved my life or saved me. I then have set up um, a website, Vaporizer Club, Vaporizer Club, then the same on the Facebook. And I did my best uh, to also get the uh, educate myself in the sense, in other words, in this country, you don't have any official educational institute um, on this topic, but in the US, if you want to get a license to open a dispense, uh, dispensing uh, establishment, you can study it. You can attend some sort of a training, thanks to which you then get a license. So, in this country, I've uh, offered help to doctors, hospital doctors, with no uh, success in Brno. They have vaporizers uh, at the hospital, but uh, they have volcano, and they didn't use it because they were waiting for some um, official translation, I guess, to start using it. And uh, this is from Canada, I believe, and then it was distributed, exported uh, throughout the world. Well. Why vaporization? Well, the major reason is that you do not burn it uh, and incinerate. Uh, um, it, whenever you burn something, you have uh, uh, then uh, harmful stuffs, which none of us wants to. Uh, I mean, the exhaust or combustion products, which you don't want to consume. Now, once you put it aside, you don't inhale it anymore. It doesn't penetrate your body but the air. So you merely uh, snuff from uh, the container or mouthpiece or something, and only then the vaporizer is active or wax. So, but even though in some cases there is uh, spontaneous evaporation, but it is far better than um, if uh, there is um, cannabis in the cigarette and uh, combust, or there is a combustion. Plus, also up to 90% of the active ingredient or substance can be used, obtained, um, while uh, if it's uh, uh, if it's smoking, it's 95% of harmful stuff, so, uh, and only 5% is the active ingredient or active substance. And uh, you also uh, distinguish the different flavor and uh, fragrance, cannabinoids, actually come to four only when the temperature is 158. 158 is the vaporization point of uh, THC in 159. Uh, it has no more any um, sort of taste-related effect, but cannabinoids start evaporating and 100 and uh, ten. It is all evaporated, but it hasn't been burnt or combusted. Therefore, it is the cleanest uh, form or option. And it's pretty fast or uh, quick uh, onset of the effect. This is not the case in suppositories, for instance. The um, effect only, the in onset of the effect is delayed. That dosage 
you can dose precisely the amount in the vaporizer and you can decide whether you want half or full chamber or if it's um, a seriously ill person, then vaporizers with huge, so to say, storage section or containers are available, and then the patient can, so to say, operate it. He doesn't have to refill it or fill it. He will merely switch it on or off, depending on depending on his uh, condition, and. Nowadays, we do know that uh, the different temperatures facilitate evaporizations of different substances. In order to learn about the content of active ingredients in the individual plants, and we also want to know uh, what uh, is the terpen profile, because terpenes are actually in all the plants in the nature. There is a broad uh, portfolio of vaporizers available currently, so you have to decide whatever I, I provide consultancy services or advice, and it usually is through the exchange of emails. So it usually takes, I don't know, three, four emails for a person to decide, depending on age, depending on whether the person wants to quit smoking or whether uh, he, she will use it for therapeutical purposes. Therefore, we simply decide uh, also based on the venue of usage. Is it going to be a tabletop? I mean, will the person have it and use it at home only? Or should it be a portable one in case the person uses it while traveling? All that matters. Now, temperature setting, that also is positive that we can, so to say, play with it based on the therapeutic need. It applies to all the vaporizers. Those who, where you can set the temperature, guarantee precision or accuracy. You pay more, but the service quality is higher and easy to operate or to use. It is especially um, useful for uh, people who suffer from tremors or motor disorders. It's, it's just like with uh, handies, you know, for senior citizens. What, uh, or which vaporizers are unsuitable? Well, the best is to try. If you, you know, uh, I mean, vaporize it and then you have ashes inside instead of uh, the buds uh, sort of roasted. And if, you, if it's a roasted bud and it is edible, well, it tells you a lot. Even a layman can say if you put thyme or mint in it, or you can, you should, you should actually taste or you should feel, smell the terpenes. So when there is an opportunity to test it here, yeah, you should do so. You should do so. Uh, don't hesitate because quality vaporizer, quality vaporizer, quality vaporizer is the name of the stand where you should go and try it instead of buying it uh, online and then sending it back. Even though it is possible, of course, the money is recoverable, but it's uh, dragging. Then it's a lengthy process. While well, here you can try it on the spot. <laughs> All right, so this is uh, um, the, what uh, business-like people take it as their opportunity and redistribute it through second-hand shops uh, or uh, advertising and vaporizers which are not good for um, the therapy have only one temperature preset, uh, but uh, that doesn't apply to the gas-based, uh, which work very well, and the thermostat is really uh, set properly. But it is set to 190 or 200 degrees. And if you would like to vaporize green tea, um, that's uh, 
no good at all. And to also be afraid of suspiciously low price. And if you don't give a guarantee for 24 months, because this is uh, your entitlement by law, and if you are not attentive enough, uh, this uh, uh, businessman would abuse it. Uh, and, you know, before um, the, the, um, the operator is charged, uh, he goes selling his products. This could be an ideal vaporizer because uh, we also receive certificate of the materials used uh, to make it. Ideal, of course, would be um, the, the retention time, which means 1.5 hours, which is about 10 to 11 setting or sessions a day. And uh, it would be ideal if we would have um, a temperature range of 80 to 225 uh, centigrade. And those of us who would like uh, a sharper taste and uh, earlier uh, effect, uh, because uh, you have to switch off your cigarettes, and etc. Some vaporizers uh, have um, uh, 235 uh, degrees, which is really um, uh, too much. But it can help somebody who wants to get real intensive taste. The price um, that which uh, would uh, be charged for uh, these. Uh, um, optimum vaporizers is something like 3,500 top price, 15,000. It would be important to have a rechargeable or exchangeable battery, or the, if you could uh, use not only dry uh, stuff, but also extracts. Uh, and extracts uh, are becoming very attractive because you can get CBD crystals, which is a very good uh, medium for the vaporizer. So if you ask for CBD, you can get it this way. Excellent material, therefore warming up the chamber is ceramics and the mouthpiece made of glass because this really uh, doesn't hamper the taste. Uh, no admixtures, of course, if it is manufactured properly. And here we have a new um, the vaporizer or comparison, really, of two basic types um, of uh, evaporation and the conduction. Put it in simple terms, it's as if you would fry um, the herbs uh, on a pan. The whole chamber is warmed up uh, and the temperature um, is transferred uh, to the herb and you inhale the active substances. These are normally uh, cheaper vaporizers, uh, which uh, you can get at, say, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000 crowns. Uh, and you can set it to three, four or five temperatures. Uh, um, stepwise. That means you can't set uh, the temperature um, the, by degrees, but you can set it uh, in steps. Uh, um, you have the thermostat, uh, and uh, the price is uh, quite interesting. Convection is another type of uh, warming up uh, the herb uh, because uh, there is the flow of hot air and there are um, the channels uh, which go past uh, the, the cup. Uh, you suck in a cold air, but uh, as you inhale the air, it passes uh, the herbs uh, and it is uh, uh, more efficient than the actual warming up uh, convection you would find in desktop and more expensive pocket um, vaporizers, uh, and the more expensive ones actually have a combination of conduction and convention. That is to say, you inhale through the vaporizer and get uh, uh, your herb mix. Watch out, there are uh, devices which claim to be vaporizers, but you would know that, um, that the herbs would be in direct contact with the source of heat. There would be a spring, uh, and if you unscrew it, uh, you would um, find that it is very efficient, but it has nothing um, in common with vaporization. So watch out. In 
if there is a direct contact between the heat and the, and the herb, it's not about vaporizing. It could get burnt as well, um, although the smell and the, uh, to you get uh, is of course attractive, uh, while in vaporization you would have uh, no waste, um, uh, leakage uh, of uh, the of the substance. You inhale everything. Very important is temperature, which you can set, like I said, uh, in two ways, either stepwise. One, three, five, seven levels. Uh, this is not quite accurate. And then vaporizers, where you can set the temperature degree of centigrade uh, wise. Uh, and there, you can really preset uh, your range of temperature for vaporization. And uh, the more expensive devices guarantee accuracy of setting of five degrees centigrade, which is sufficient. If the manufacturer wouldn't give the temperature or it is preset uh, and you would only regulate uh, the operation by pressing a button or uh, by um, the time of holding uh, the, um, the set, um, it depends on you really depends on how skillful you are because again 20% uh, is uh, in danger of burning so we have selected a vaporizer and as for new vaporizer if you have it um, warm it up uh, empty or put some the herb in it which you like which you find palatable and then um, based on the possibility to make a mix you choose the temperature you should bear in mind that you should um, uh, crush uh, the dry herbs uh, as much as possible. They are dry, but they do have some moisture, and, uh, which uh, in vaporizing would uh, um, be, so to say, used up. As for um, the herbs, you can choose them. On web, you would find characteristics and profiles of individual varieties. You will be able to find uh, your uh, variety and uh, buy it. Or you can grow it yourself, of course. Uh, we know that in Canada or United States, uh, they developed um, the, a variety specific for a girl um, who suffered with epilepsy and the variety had no THC. So epileptic patients today have a chance uh, of using just CBD cannabinoids and reduce in this way the number of seizures. So if you have, uh, um, if you know a person who suffers uh, like this, uh, he will tell you how desirable it is to reduce the number of seizures from 10 to 2 a day. When I advise people the, what to do, I always say set the temperature as low as possible, particularly if it is uh, your first experience with the herb. I repeat, start with the lowest uh, temperature, use uh, as little quantity as possible, and increase the temperature stepwise after each five minutes. Uh, watch it, uh, put down your perceptions. Uh, you would uh, then know the point of time when you felt the first effect uh, of this therapy, which is important, it's quite expensive unless you have your own source of cannabis. So once you have found what you consider best for you, stay there, don't uh, use uh, more the, because that should be sufficient for you. But uh, make sure that uh, you, so to say, um, the treat yourself uh, as a patient. Um, we all respond to terpenoids in different ways. And uh, a couple of tips and tricks. Uh, every vaporizer is uh, a specimen. So if you don't like uh, the um, vapor that you get, um, you know, try to compact, for instance, the herb or loosen it. Much depends on your vaporizer. The conventional, the more de expensive ones, uh, appreciate fine 
and uh, slightly packed uh, charge. And also, if you have time um, the, to, so to say, um, take a treatment, or um, the, if you um, the, are afraid of seizure, and uh, you know, watch the, the herb. It should never be black. It should be. It should go and darken. Um, the, you know, 20 minutes is the best time because uh, after 10 minutes you would feel that um, the, it uh, doesn't work because cannabinoids um, have no smell, no taste. It is the terpenes which give you the smell. So for 20 minutes, vaporize one charge and then have a rest. Um, wait uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes uh, to see the effect and then perhaps start vaporizing again. So that's if you have time. But in case of uh, emergency, you immediately switch the vaporizer to the top uh, possible temperature and uh, you would immediately get uh, the active substances in your body in a package. Um, the, it is a possibility, but when you vaporize immediately at highest temperature, the ideal time for vaporization depends on the quantity of herbs, uh, but it is uh, at least 10 minutes, could be 20. Here we sometimes uh, um, have to warn that uh, vaporizers um, the, would switch off in order to save the battery. So watch it again, and if the vaporizer switches off in order to economize electricity, switch it again. And for those of you who would like to stop smoking and start vaporizing, it's difficult to do it overnight because you would not appreciate the effect. Have a pause. Use only half uh, the charge of the herb and uh, start with the lowest temperature that um, your vaporizer can manage. And now let me also say that uh, those of you who um, the smoke cannabis, you are used to very intensive smoke. Here you don't exhale anything really. And uh, if it would happen, it's uh, vapor, it's um, the, not uh, smoke. And uh, therefore, you should sooner or later get rid uh, of scratching and coughing. And this is a table showing uh, the active substances and uh, how they work and, uh, at which temperatures and for which diagnosis. Uh, I have a couple of copies of this table. If you would like to have one, contact me. Closer to the stand uh, called uh, legalization. Um, the, it is on the right, right leaving this Congress hall. Or the, make a photocopy, because this is really my know-how, which I put at the disposal to um, the public, uh, because uh, doctors and hospitals don't do that. So these are uh, um, not very serious diseases, uh, but there are clinical studies uh, which uh, show that different temperatures, different cannabinoids, and of course terpenes uh, help uh, to carry the active substances to the uh, location in the brain where um, the, they are requested. And uh, their efficacy through cannabinoids and terpenes would increase. And perhaps there are processes that we uh, are ignorant of. So it's pains, uh, blockage, neurological disorders, muscle, cramps, uh, their combination of THC, CCB is very helpful, plus cannabinol. And uh, more serious diseases, of course, uh, require the broader spectrum of cannabinoids. Let me mention here that THC and CBD in raw form, that is to say before the, the material is dry, you would have tetrahydrocannabinol acid plus other um, the acids. And I'm often asked whether they can vaporize fresh plants. Yes, you can. But uh, the effect uh, is uh, 
mitigated by the acids, which do not have psychoactive uh, impact in this quantity. And the plant in the vaporizer um, gets a real thermal shock. And then in a minute, really, uh, it would be fully dry. And uh, then um, the, you, the, it would release no active substances. So reduce it to a minute, uh, but uh, um, the effect uh, is uh, perhaps uh, mitigated, use juices, etc. Mám tady potom přehled. I've got an overview. I've added one more table of terpenes. You see the temperatures here. Some literature differs in opinion uh, as to the uh, temperature and alpha pinen, which often times is in uh, rosemary, then the, the temperature is similar as THC. And that's the uh, evaporation points, actually. Once you suffer from the disorder, you can use black pepper, but if you use cannabis as well, you will find beta, garylferin, and hemp dog, and in others. And wherever I found exp uh, some sort of knowledge, I wrote the varieties next to it. So wherever I knew, I wrote it down. It's all available either throughout Europe or here uh, at this uh, fair as well. Then Bornell has a new study. Yeah, something has already been confirmed um, as to top uh, qualities, uh, anti-tumor or tumor mitigating qualities. Uh, it's a good career and uh, it has a more intensive than effect so we will look for strains with a high percentage of bornell fetal that uh, is uh, in, uh, chlorophyll of each and every plant and uh, uh, it is a uh, high, highly represented or present in green tea. So, among other things, it uh, lowers cholesterol. Therefore, again, you have uh, next to some terpenes, you have uh, the varieties of strains. Jack Herrera is full of aromatic. Uh, Terpenes, and there you have to be aware because uh, that some are lethal, like nicotine. I mean, it's not uh, likely that you would overdose on nicotine, but terpenes are available in bottles here too, and they're sold here. But usually, it's terpenes obtained from other plants, but cannabis, and the effects are the very same. You can Rarely use it, but eucalyptus, for instance, is not to be used in pregnancy. And there are some other limitations. So you have to properly study it if you want to take it. And you should also check the boiling point and the uh, high risk dose, even though in reality it is almost uh, impossible to be overdosed. This you can also copy if you wish. I refer to some of the studies um, available on the web. Usually rats are used uh, for the studies. It's not allowed to do these um, on children. So we only know that uh, thanks to the parents sharing information with us. Uh, this is a reference to some organization, Vaporizer Club, that's me who does that or writes that. Uh, most of it you find uh, uh, at um, Nawasako, that's uh, uh, the um, institute, state institute for cannabis uh, control. I mean, it's still, you know, you can find actually the list of doctors there, but 
it is still a kind of stigma or stigmatized topic. So you will not uh, easily find the names of all the doctors there. We have got with, uh, maps of art, uh, thousands of SACL, that's the State Agency for Medical Cannabis Service, SACL, S-A-K-L. And information on Bonol and latest developments you will find on herb.co and such sites or web pages. You have uh, multiple in the Czech language, cannabinoid.cz uh, with a single N or double N uh, is a very useful place to access for more information. And uh, one of the best uh, informational studies is NCBI one, but a study from um, 2011 has proven synergy with uh, cannabinoids and therapy, so uh, actually synergy between that and that.